Okay. So could you please tell us from your perspective, um, what are you looking for in candidate when you do interview or when you do uh, sure. uh, interview process? Sure. I had a few peers in me, so I'll probably give you a very <laughs> honest answer. <laughs> okay. Record. So um, what I look for in a candidate is someone who really enjoys the process. You know, people who enjoy technology, uh, who actually, because you know, that's what's, that's what's gonna sustain you, keep you coming to work, you know, like, you know, when you gotta wake up in the morning, get ready and, you know, you know deal with that shitty commute, you know, what's gonna really drive you, the fact that, you, you know, you enjoy the process, you know? So that's sort of what I try to look for in the resume. It, um, so when I look at the resume, I kind of look at what their interests are, um, you know, like what they've been up to, what, like, you know, what field of technology they've been working in, you know, things like that. So, you know, to so give me a hint of like you know, what their interests are. Yeah. Awesome. What's your favorite interview question then? I have two favorite interview questions. One of them is, um, give me an example of the time that you've succeeded and what, and what were the contributing factors to that success? And the other one is, give me an example of, of like when you failed, you know, and how did you deal with that? I don't ask a lot of technical questions because I figure if you're in front of me, you sort of passed, you know. Uh, Brian did his job. Yes, Brian did his job. <laughs> you're technical enough. Uh, what I try to look for is since you're gonna be working in a team, I try to see how you're gonna like, you know, uh, work within our team, within our culture. So those, those are the two questions that I ask. And <clears throat> yeah. And what's your, uh, the red flag when you do interview? For example, they pass uh, uh, everything and then yes. something goes yeah. wrong. Basically. So the red flags come from the two questions that I, those two questions that I ask. So I ask them for uh, when you've succeeded. And if they start taking all the credit, like they go, I succeeded because I did this, I did that. You know, to me, you don't succeed in a vacuum. There's always some factor like you know someone you're working with or someone someone who contributed to your success and i want to see you know the person the candidate give give like credit to that you know because that that tells me you know that uh they they know what it is to work in a team and they realize that you know it's a team effort you know maybe you know i did contribute more than others but other people still contributed and when i ask about those uh, uh failures I see if they try to defuse the failure, like overly diffuse it to everybody else. Like whether, how much, they, how much credit they, you know, how much, uh, you know, uh, responsibility they take for their failure, you know, and how they dealt with it. So those are the red, red flags that I look for. And they usually come from those two uh, questions. Totally makes sense. And uh, can you give like resume tips? Uh, what is your question your eye like? Yeah. When you're looking for resumes, like, I don't know, that yeah. you might, see a lot of resumes right sure sure only resume tip i can give you is for my own resume which is i keep it short i keep it less than two pages and i make it very like to the point like here's my you know here's my uh, contact info my objective my skill sets and my experience and i and then in the experience i just put what i what i've done was and that's it you know, and then very last thing that I put is, you know, like, you know, my, uh, but I do include my education, my uh, outside interests. But I try to keep it within two pages. And if my work experience goes beyond two pages, I cut my work experience out. I only give people, provide information for the last maybe seven years, if that. I keep it short because, you know, like, the managers, the guy's reading resumes all day. He doesn't want to be reading paragraphs and going through three, four pages of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, <clears throat> and the other hint I can give you is uh, this is going to sound hokey, really, but live a good resume. As in, you know, like be very mindful or be very, I mean, be picky about the jobs that you take because realize you're going to, you should put in your time if you do pick a job. And, you know, so always look for, like when, you in, when you're being interviewed, always think of it as an, as an opportunity that you're also interviewing them. You know, as in like, you know, when you're sitting there and you're being asked questions, you're answering them, just think in your mind, wow, this guy's an asshole. I don't want to work here. 
You know, I mean, the things like that, like you, you got to be mindful of that. And when they give you the opportunity to ask them questions, take that opportunity. One of the questions I always ask is, well, why should I work here? You know, like, why, why do you work here? Because these are important questions because, you know, like you, living a good resume, not living your life for your job. I don't mean that. But, you know, like living your resume as in, you know, like, you know, being careful, careful about the jobs that you pick and how you perform in your jobs. That's the best way to build a good resume. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Frank. Thank you.